If you've been following the rapid growth of the space industry, you know how much influence a few major players have had over the last decade. One company in particular has been setting the pace with new technologies, ambitious goals, and a track record of actually delivering on them. As a result, their designs have become the standard others try to match. This trend has led to a growing number of rockets, spacecraft, and components around the world that bear a striking resemblance to what's already flying from their launch pads. And recently, one of the most advanced rocket engines they've ever built appears to have been recreated overseas. This story begins with SpaceX's Raptor 3, an engine built to push the company's Starship program into its next phase. While most rocket engines go through long lifespans with only gradual improvements, SpaceX has gone through three major versions of Raptor in just a few years. Raptor 3 is the result of streamlining almost every part of the system, higher thrust, fewer complex parts, and faster production. It's meant to be powerful enough for deep space missions while also being efficient to build, maintain, and reuse. Now, a new engine has surfaced in China that closely matches the Raptor 3 in both size and layout. It's called Mammoth 1, and it's being developed by a company named Star Shuttle Technology, though some materials show them using the name ARCT. This firm is relatively new to the industry, and until recently, very little was known about them. The choice of the name Mammoth 1 hints that this is only the beginning, and that a line of engines may follow. From the outside, Mammoth 1 looks remarkably similar to Raptor 3. The arrangement of its exhaust nozzle, feed lines, and plumbing is almost a one-to-one -one match. The streamlined layout that SpaceX introduced with Raptor 3, replacing a maze of pipes and valves with a cleaner, more compact design, is present here as well. But there are a few noticeable differences. Mammoth 1's exterior is silver instead of Raptor's matte black finish, and it has an extra lever-like mechanism mounted on one side that doesn't appear on SpaceX's engine. In terms of power, available data suggests that Mammoth 1 is designed to produce around 240 metric tons of thrust at sea level. That's less than the Raptor 3's 280 tons, but still stronger than the Raptor 2 currently flying. Estimated vacuum thrust falls between 260 and 270 tons. Its specific impulse, a measure of efficiency, is listed at 330 seconds, which is lower than both Raptor 2 and Raptor 3, but still competitive compared to most operational engines today. Structurally, Mammoth 1 is believed to use a full-flow staged combustion cycle, the same advanced system Raptor uses. This approach burns both the fuel-rich and oxidizer-rich gases completely, allowing for higher performance. It also runs on the same propellants, liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Star Shuttle Technology has reportedly completed a system-level design review and is moving toward hardware testing, aiming for initial hot-fire trials before the end of the year. If all goes well, they could attempt flight use by 2026. But the engine is only part of the picture. Alongside Mammoth One, the same company has shown off a large rocket called Glacier One. Much like the engine, this vehicle's design borrows heavily from existing launch systems. Its first stage features grid fins, folding landing legs, and proportions that bring Falcon 9 to mind. The body is made from stainless steel, the same material SpaceX chose for Starship. The second stage connects to the first through a hot staging ring, a technique SpaceX only recently introduced to improve performance during stage separation. The second stage of Glacier 1 also resembles upper stages from other rockets, including a long fairing for carrying oversized payloads. It's narrower at the top and has proportions that recall parts of New Glenn and Vulcan. The diameter of the rocket is about 5 meters, making it wider than Falcon 9 but smaller than Starship. Based on images, the first stage alone could be around 50 meters tall, with the second stage adding roughly 30 meters, bringing the total height above 80 meters. The propulsion setup appears to be one large engine on the second stage and between seven and nine engines on the first stage, matching the configuration style of Falcon 9. The company claims Glacier 1 will be able to lift 40 metric tons to orbit, with reusability helping keep launch costs in the range of tens of thousands of yuan per kilogram. On paper, 
these specifications put Glacier 1 in a competitive range for heavy lift rockets. But the reality of matching SpaceX's performance is far more complicated than building something that looks similar. SpaceX's capabilities come from years of iteration, failure, and refinement, knowledge that can't be copied from photographs or diagrams. For example, the Raptor 3's efficiency and reliability aren't just the result of its shape, but of hundreds of subtle engineering choices, material selections, and manufacturing techniques developed through direct experience. By moving straight to a Raptor 3-like design, Star Shuttle technology is skipping the early trial and error stages that SpaceX went through. This raises a big question. Do they truly understand how to operate and maintain an engine of this complexity over many flights? Without that deep operational knowledge, problems are almost guaranteed to appear, and they may be harder to fix without a history of testing and data. The Glacier 1 rocket design also brings up concerns. The second stage is unusually long for a vehicle of its proportions, which could make it harder to control. In most designs, stage height is balanced to keep thrust and stability in check. Stretching the second stage without increasing the booster's height may lead to issues during ascent and separation. Another questionable choice is the placement of the grid fins near the hot staging ring. Hot staging releases an intense burst of heat, flame, and pressure as the upper stage ignites while still connected to the booster. With the fins sitting so close to that blast zone, they risk heat damage, warping, or even partial failure. If that happens, the rocket's steering during descent could be compromised, which would threaten any plans for safe recovery and reuse. A key feature these rockets are supposed to deliver. The bottom line is that while Mammoth 1 and Glacier 1 may look impressive on paper or in press renders, their chances of matching SpaceX's proven reliability and performance are slim. SpaceX's technology rests on over a decade of operational launches, hundreds of successful landings, and an ongoing push for quicker turnaround times. Falcon 9 boosters have now flown well over a dozen missions each, and Starship's next-generation systems, powered by the Raptor 3 engine, are already being built and tested in real flight conditions. By the time Mammoth 1 and Glacier 1 are truly ready for their first missions, assuming the 2026 goal doesn't slip, SpaceX's Starship could be routinely operating in its V3 configuration. At that point, the technological and operational gap between the original and the newcomer could be even wider than it is today, rather than closing as the competition might hope. None of this takes away from the ambition shown by Chinese companies entering this market. It's clear they aim to compete on the global stage, and using established designs can be a way to speed up entry. But true competition requires more than visual similarity. It demands the same level of engineering discipline, infrastructure, and operational experience. SpaceX's lead in reusable rocketry is the product of solving thousands of problems no one else has had to face at scale. Those lessons aren't written in manuals. They're learned through hard-earned trial and error. Without that, even the most convincing copy can end up struggling to meet expectations. The coming years will show whether Mammoth 1 and Glacier 1 can live up to their claims. They might achieve flight, and they may even hit some of their performance targets. But in terms of reliability, cost efficiency, and the ability to evolve rapidly, SpaceX remains far ahead. And as they continue to refine Starship and Raptor 3, that advantage is likely to grow. The real contest is not about who can make something that looks like a SpaceX engine or a rocket. It's about who can deliver missions consistently, at low cost, and at high cadence. On that front, SpaceX has already proven itself. For anyone trying to catch up, the road ahead will be long, and copying the hardware is just the first and easiest step.